So Connor Hughes of SNY gave an interesting update on the situation on, on a piece published on SNY on Friday where he said... Big Blue will head into camp with Locke behind Daniel Jones. The whispers are getting louder that the quarterbacking depth chart is written in pencil, though. Head coach Brian Dable will play the player he believes gives the Giants the best chance. Understandable, considering what might happen if things go poorly. Daniel Jones is still rocking that four years, $160 million contract, entering year two of it. At the end of this, the Giants do have an out where the, uh, the dead cap money gets cut pretty significantly, so they could move off him. And, and signing Drew Locke is definitely an interesting signing because we heard Joe Shane, I'm going to bring up this clip real quick, talking about their quarterback situation all the way back in last November. So take a quick, li uh, take a quick listen to Joe Shane, the GM of the Giants, talking about their quarterback situation. The expectation is when Daniel's healthy that he will be our starting quarterback. As I, I think we're going to have to do something in the quarterback um, whether it's free agency or or the draft, I mean, just where we are, Tyrod's um, contracts up. You know, Devito is obviously under contract, and Daniel. You know, we don't know when he's going to be ready. So, you know, just from an off-season program standpoint, you know, I think um, that'll be a position that we'll we'll have to look. Um, again, there's different avenues, free agency or the draft, but we'll, we'll have to address it at some point. So, I want to know how many games do you think Daniel Jones will end up starting for the New York Giants this upcoming season? Well, I depend. I think it depends on how he plays. Uh, if he goes out and loses to the Vikings and the Commanders in the first two games of the season, then I think you'll see Drew Locke in there pretty fast because uh, Brian Dable is on the hot seat this year. If he doesn't get it done, and uh, you get to around Christmas time, and the the Giants are, uh, you know, at the bottom of the heap uh, and really low in all the stats and uh, and last place in the NFC East then uh, I think Bill Belichick will be getting a call. Wow. You think Bill Belichick's going to be out there, you know, coaching up the Giants? That's one of the teams he said he would like, he would love to be a uh, head coach of. So, and I think that it will be there for him if the Giants uh, tank this year. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't think they'll have to necessarily tank because I think Daniel Jones is that bad, and I'm not the only one. We brought this up earlier on in the show with the CBS Power Rankings for the quarterbacks. CBS Sports even ranked Daniel Jones below rookie quarterbacks, behind backup quarterbacks. Behind, but, yeah, but by, behind people who never even played in the NFL. Behind, that's pretty bad, man. Right. If I saw that, that was me, and I saw that, I'd say, wow, yeah, that's pretty bad. I feel bad about that. Behind yeah. quarterbacks that barely played, like yeah. Will Levis, didn't have a large playing time. Behind a quarterback that hasn't that played 75 seconds, he even ranked him behind. And Aaron Rodgers, who, once again, is 11th. I don't understand that. But regardless of the fact, and people calling him a top-10 quarterback entering last season was ridiculous. I do think it's fascinating still, though, that they signed Drew Locke. Because that shows, and Drew Locke only well, played a, number, a couple of games, had a very nice come-from-behind victory against the Eagles last season. But... I just think that it's going to be interesting to see if Daniel Jones can step it up because what we saw last season was absolutely horrendous, and I don't think anyone can really defend him. You might complain about the offensive line and whatnot, but we he, the Giants have had a poor offensive line for the past six, seven seasons. Yeah. So you wow. can't necessarily use the offensive line as being that poor. He, his, his uh, quarterback record was 1-5. in five. His completion percentage wasn't that bad, but his, he went back to old Daniel Jones. Two picks, six interceptions, a couple fumbles, I believe. That's not the Daniel Jones that's worth $40 million a year. Mm -hmm. He had four fumbles last season. He had, ten yeah. he had 10 turnovers to two touchdowns. Yeah, I, I don't think the Giants have ever been overly confident me, in uh, Daniel Jones. Why they gave him a four-year, $160 million contract beyond me when they could have given the money to Saquon Barkley and franchise tag Daniel Jones would have been a much smarter move, and they didn't do it. Now they're stuck with him um, this year for sure. But uh, they have Drew Locke behind him, and if he gets off to a poor start, Jones, then I think you'll see Locke in there pretty fast. And uh, they, they say Dayball will play the quarterback, gives him the, the team the best chance to win, which he's got to do because, again, he's on the hot seat. Now, you look at uh, Jones, he's uh, been injury prone. He's had two neck injuries, a torn right ACL now. Um you know, I, I think Locke might get in there just because they don't want Jones' contract to become guaranteed if he gets hurt. Right. So uh, Jones is essentially in a contract here. Absolutely. Uh, if he comes out and plays well, and I, I, you know, I think they did give him 
some vote of confidence by drafting a, a really elite wide receiver in yeah, the draft, right? right? Instead of a quarterback, they did consider uh, moving up in the draft from six to try to get to three with the Patriots to get Drake May, but that didn't work out. And uh, Day Bowl and Schoen uh, reportedly have been scouting. Uh, other potential replacements for Daniel Jones as far back as 2022. Right. And Jones had the good year and got him to the playoffs and he got that contract. So th that's where we are today. We'll have to wait and see what happens. So I think if he doesn't play well, he's going to be on the bench and Drew Locke's going to be in there. And I think that's what's fascinating. You bring it up. They were looking for a replacement for him two years ago, but that was when he had a pretty decent, he had a decent season. I'm not saying no. a good season, because if you go from absolute garbage to better, than, slightly better than that, it's still not a good season in totality. Mm -hmm. You're not a great quarterback because you have one good year, one you know, okay year. I think they'd like to have someone around to push Jones harder. I'm not sure they think Locke is the greatest guy to do that. I think they might have liked to have gotten up to the higher draft pick to get to one of the elite rookies, uh, but they weren't able to do that. Um, Drew Locke. 9-14 and 14 as a starter, as a second-round pick in 2019, 54, about 55%, uh, I'm sorry, 59% uh, completion percentage, but almost 800 attempts, 5,300 yards passing, 28 TDs, and 23 interceptions. There's nothing to write home about. I don't think no. anyone thinks he's the, the greatest uh, uh, guy out there to push Jan Daniel Jones, but that's what they've got. That's where they are right now. Right. And uh, the schedule came out Wednesday, and, and I do want to bring this up because I think it's important to see. Well, let's think about it. If the quarterbacking depth chart, as Connor Hughes wrote about for us, and why is true that it's only penciled in with the potential of erasing Daniel Jones as number one and putting in Drew Locke, or hell, even Tommy DeVito for the sake of saying Tommy it. DeVito. Let's right. not forget about him. Well, I, I think he's going to be gone. This is their schedule. This, this is the way it looks. Yeah. So I decided to go best case scenario. If yeah. Daniel Jones were the starting quarterback, I say they go six and eleven with wins over the uh, with wins, wins over the Commanders, with wins over the Seahawks, the Saints, the uh, the Colts, and the Panthers. That's best case scenario. You go six and eleven. That's not terrible. You think they'll beat the Commanders once? Once. I say they split because normally Daniel Jones splits yeah. with the Commanders. And then I said the worst case scenario, or as I'm saying, the most realistic case scenario. You go two and fifteen. And the only team you beat is you do split with the commanders and you beat the worst team in the NFL, the Carolina Panthers. That yeah. is the th th I think that is the worst and honestly the most realistic scenario. And I actually have the Giants losing seven straight. I think if the Giants lose four straight, Drew Locke will be getting a call. Yeah. I I think fans will be calling for him. Mm -hmm. I think Brian Dable will be asking Joe Shane and, and uh, Mara to say, hey, I'm dying over you. I, I, you're costing me my own job. Yeah. Let me put in Drew Locke. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, I would say in terms of win-loss there, I don't think they'll – although the Vikings and the Commanders both have rookie quarterback out there, right? So that, I would say that's J.J. A, McCarthy, though, which is with the team. Yeah, with the team he's got around him, the pieces around him. I don't think they win game one. And they're, they're on the road for that game. Okay, so let's go best case scenario with this one, okay? So, oh, no, they're at home for the game one. Correct. I, I think that'll be a close game, actually. Really? Uh, I, but I do think, I'm, I don't know. I don't think they're going to win that game. So I let, think they let, have let, a... Let's go best case scenario. So Vikings okay. is a loss, correct? Yeah, okay. I think so. At Commanders. I, th I think at Commanders, yeah, I think they win that game. Win, okay. Yeah. At, the, at the Cleveland, I don't think they win that one. Loss. Versus Dallas, I don't think they win that one. At Seattle? Seattle is, who's their quarterback going to be? Geno? Geno Smith, yeah. so Sam Howell's the backup. Yeah. I don't think they win that game. So that's a loss. And I then don't think they win the, the Bengals. Bengals. I don't think they beat the Eagles. So Saquon Barkley's going to run all over them. Probably. And then versus, uh, uh, verse, this one's it, verse Pittsburgh. No, I don't think they win that one. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't think they win at, uh, at Washington either. I think they do beat Carolina. Okay. Uh, I don't think they're going to beat uh, the uh, Tampa. Tampa Bay, and they won't beat Dallas. We'll beat that. How about New Orleans? Maybe they win that game. They're I'll home against them New that Orleans. I yeah. give them that one. Then versus Ravens. No, they're going to win that one. Kirk Cousins. No, nope. Michael. They're going to win that one. They might beat the Colts. Might so we'll add a W yeah. there, and then and add the, Eagles. They won't win that one. So oh, you're oh. looking at f uh, three wins. 
Three wins. Three wins. That's the end of Brian Dable. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> Stick a fork. So in your him. He's done. your one your best case scenario is three and fourteen. I'm wow. afraid. I mean, I think that's realistic. I mean, maybe they well, do, maybe they I find 15, something. Maybe maybe uh, is it Malik Neighbors? Malik that, Neighbors, yes. Maybe he turns into a world beater, and Daniel Jones finds a way to get him the ball a lot. That might pick him up two or three more wins. But uh, even then, I don't think they'll they'll never play more than they won't play five hundred ball. I, there is no. I'm the, there's no way they're going to play 500 This ball. is not a hot take, but I guarantee you Giants fans, some really loyal ones are going to take a personal shot at this. There is a zero point infinite, infinitesimal amount of zeros percentage that the Giants are going to go 500 or close to 500 because yeah. you can't go 500. Can't they're not going to go 9 and 8. Anymore. They're not going to go 8 and 9. It, it won't happen because this team is not built for, for winning football. Their offensive line, while it is decent because you added Aaron Stinney, you got John Runyon, Evan Neal is still your starting right tackle. That's a problem. Andrew Thomas is a very, very good left tackle. And then John Michael Schmitz, he's an okay but young center. You have Malik Neighbors, who is your, maybe, I'm not going to, offensively, definitely, is your most talented piece. Hands down. But this team is built for the defensive line, which is kind of ironic because Mike Clay, as we talked about before, he projected uh, you know, how teams are going to do in their ratings or whatever. He projects the Giants to... No, their defensive line, we have to remember this, their defensive rating for next season will be 31st in the league. Overall rating? Really? Dead last. Based on what, what Clay is predicting, the 2024-2025 the the, the Giants would, the will be the worst rated team. The defensive line will be one of the best in the league, right? The defensive line, they 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 they, up they, a guy. they they do have a decent edge and uh, interior defensive rating. It's yeah. decent, not great. The, the edge is significantly better. But they have a new a defensive OC, a uh, 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 defensive coordinator because right. uh, Dayball couldn't couldn't get along with Wink Martindale. Gave right. him a terrible time. And he he actually predicts Drew Lock getting in there probably the last three games. The because, last three games? Well, no, because think about this. If, if if we're talking about... I get he gets in there a lot sooner than that based on my predictions. Okay, well, no, that's fair. But we have to, we have to realize that what we've seen the past couple seasons is we saw it with Russell Wilson. We saw it with uh, Derek Carr. They each had injury guarantees. We're going to see the same thing where he's going to get benched for, for whatever the reason they give is. But the reality is the, of the situation. They're benching him to not pay him $30-plus plus million for next season. Yeah. They want to get off of him probably instantaneously because he's no longer a great quarterback. Well, what if he gets hurt in week four? Then yeah. that is quite unfortunate yeah. for the Giants. Yeah. Well, then wait, who's their week four matchup? What's what's the chance? Oh, yeah, Dallas. Yeah, no, that's going to be brutal. That is going to be brutal. Micah Parsons? Yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's, that's Look what happened to him brutal. last year, man. He, he was... I don't when he think dropped back the pass, the Dallas, the Dallas defense was there waiting for him when he got back there. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was really bad. <laughs> They had no offensive line. I don't think they scored a single point in that game as well. So the Giants, th this season is a wrap. I I'm sorry to say. I think, you know, if we're being realistic about this situation, this season is a complete wrap already, even though it hasn't even begun. We're still in the month of May. But just with the fact that Daniel Jones, your quarterback, your running game really hasn't done anything besides get Devin Singletary, but you lost Saquon Barkley. I mean, yet just not this. This is not a great season for you. It really isn't. I'd, I'd be. On, it, it's unfortunate. By the way, that week one game, forty nothing Cowboys, forty nothing. I know. It's brutal. Absolutely brutal. Yeah. Daniel Jones did not have a good game. One hundred four yards on fifty three percent completion percentage. No touchdowns. Two picks. Three point seven yards in attempt. Yeah. Well, that game, the the, the Cowboys defense was waiting for him when he got Absolutely. back to the pocket. Well, yeah, he yeah. snapped the ball. Mark and Micah Parsons was already, you know, whispering in his ear, "What's up, it. buddy?" So, <laughs> I, I mean, the schedule itself—they're going to regret not signing Saquon Barkley they because have, they he's going to pretty hard schedule. He's going to smoke them. He's going to smoke them. I think in both games that they play this year, he's going to have a lot of motivation to come in there and play well. And the and the uh, Eagles have a decent offensive line. Better than he ever played behind the Giants, right? Yeah. And he look at how he did with the Giants. He had some very good seasons there when he didn't have much around him. They knew the ball was going to be handed to him. On the Eagles side, they have wide receivers. They've got uh, they've got a good offensive line. They've got a great quarterback who can also run the ball. I think Saquon Barkley is going to have a career year this year.
not only that, stay healthy. The Giants are tied for the sixth hardest strength of schedule. That's hard to believe, right? I mean, they had a lousy year last year. How could they have such a hard schedule? I don't know. Green Bay is also there. Pittsburgh has the third toughest schedule. Cleveland has the hardest schedule. Patriots tied for eighth eighth hardest. Eighth hardest. Eighth for hardest. Them, huh? Wow. Who has the easiest schedule? The easiest schedule, I believe, goes to back to the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons and the wow. Saints once again are, are the easiest two schedules. Hmm. It's because the at the end of they play six games right. against horrible teams. Yeah. So I was just say horrible, but they're in the worst division in football. So you're playing against you know you're playing six games against teams within the the worst division in football. This Giants team though, it's not built to win. It's it's not make it's not built to make the playoffs, win a playoff game. And it the the scent of a Super Bowl is nowhere in sight. Nowhere you can't even imagine it with this team. Mm -hmm. Daniel Jones, based on CBS Sports Power Rankings, is the worst quarterback in the NFL. Mm -hmm. As a even fan, below Bryce as Young. a fan, I've been a Giants fan for the NFC. You know, I, I I watch them. I I guess I root for them in the NFC. I'm a diehard Patriots fan. And it's kind of ironic my, that you like the Giants. They're my number one team. But Bill Belichick winds up the Giants coach, man. I might even buy a jersey, oh, a Giants jersey. Well, it better not be a Daniel Jones one because those things uh -huh. will be maybe five bucks. Yeah, They're, they're going to need a new quarterback. Drew Locke's not the future. You're going in. Well, they'll be able to draft one. They'll be have one of the top picks next year. Is it suck for Shador? Is, is, is that what we're talking about? I don't know if he's the one they'd want, but uh, there'll be some good Quinn quarterbacks Ewers. to pick from, pick from so they can pick a quarterback. Uh, I, I, at this point, I feel bad. I feel bad for two fan bases. Giants and Jets. And we're in New York, so it's yeah. even worse. New York sports has had, had some tough years. The, the Knicks. Tough years. The Knicks aside from the Yankees. Aside yeah. from the Yankees. Well, even then, it's been though. A, some long droughts for the uh, with the Giants, I guess you could look back. What, 2012 they did make was the, the playoffs last the, uh, the year before last, but uh, the Super Bowl, last Super Bowl was 2012. Against so the Patriots. That's not so, so long ago. It's, it's but the Knicks, the Knicks ago. haven't won a. A championship since 1973, I think, and, and the, the the Mets that, and the the was Mets the Mets 86, 86, and the uh, Jets uh, 68 <laughs> or 69. A, it's been a very long one time. of those years. It's been a really long time. This New New York sports is just you know the Rangers are doing it's a well tough so place far. to play. It's a tough Mass place to play, it's man. The second biggest market. The, the spotlight is on you. The, it's like a laser beam, and the the sports writers are very tough. There's a lot of them too. Yeah, yeah. So, unfortunate, Daniel Jones probably won't. I'm saying, if we had to answer the question, how many games do you expect Daniel Jones to start? And we go with what I think is the most realistic and, ironically, the worst-case scenario. Week six against the Bengals at home, Drew Locke will be the starter. Five mm -hmm. games. My thought is he might Five get games. in there. He might even get in there in week three if the Giants lose badly the first two games of the and and what, Daniel he throws Jones like plays picks. terrible. Yeah. But here's the thing. Yeah. I don't think Drew Locke will be a whole lot better, and Daniel Jones might get back in there later on because Drew Locke is terrible too. That could be the case. Yeah. It could be round robin like the Jets last season yeah. where it was Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson's like throwing Trevor Simeon, but Trevor Simeon's not that great. You just have this entire just, you know, unfortunate situation like the Jets did last season when they're trying to deal with the Aaron Rodgers thing. But, well, Giants, it, it really is unfortunate. Just sixth hardest schedule, quarterback not great, running game not great. Offensively, Malik Neighbors is probably your best player. Defensively, though, you got some playmakers. Brian Burns, Dexter Lawrence, Kayvon Thibodeau, a couple nice pieces. But in totality, no. Giants are not a very, very good team. But, of course, as always, we'll see. We'll we may eat our words, but I doubt it. Hey, I was told to eat my words after I didn't give Daniel Jones top 10 quarterback ranking it's going into the season. I feel pretty good about it now. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel great about it now, actually. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.